I'm Peter Block in Washington, D.C. at ACC 17. To my left is Hugh Calkins, an old friend. Hugh, how long do we know each other? About 100 years. <laughs> yeah, about okay, 100 there years. you go, from Johns Hopkins. Uh, Hugh is uh, the principal investigator of ReCircuit, an important trial which is going to change the way we think about doing uh, ablation. So without further ado, Hugh, tell me quickly about the trial and then we'll talk about what this means. Yes, ReCircuit compared two anticoagulation strategies at the time of AF ablation. Patients were randomized to either uninterrupted warfarin, which is currently considered the standard, or uninterrupted dibigatran, where they took the last dose the morning of the procedure. And the finding of the study was that uninterrupted dibigatran resulted in a 77% lower risk of major bleeding events. So there were 28 bleeding events among the 318 patients on warfarin and five major bleeding events under the 317 patients on dibigatran. So it was a striking difference. There were no strokes in either arm, no systemic embolic events in either arm, and one TIA on the warfarin arm. So it was fairly striking results. So I was going to say end of story and, you know, let's move on from here because clearly things are changing. And the good news is the Bicotran also can be reversed. So let's talk a little bit about what this means for all of you guys that do this stuff. Well, I think it's important because it tells us that, it, that performing the procedure on uninterrupted dibigatran is safe in terms of bleeding events and thrombotic events. And although no patient in this study required idareucizumab, the reversal agent, to shut down dibigatran, you know, it's available. So in case there is some catastrophic bleed, a tear of the atrium or a steam pop or whatever, having the comfort or having a reversal agent on your shelf, I think is really fantastic. So for me, it's going to change my practice and I'll do you uninterrupted dibigatran for all my AF ablation patients. Okay, so uh, Hugh, one of the questions obviously then that pops up is, okay, you finished the ablation, now what do you do? Well, the, you know, the current guidelines say that all patients should be anticoagulated for at least two months following the ablation procedure, and at two months it's based on your CHADS vast stroke risk profile and not on the apparent success or failure of the procedure. So I think what this tells us is you put a patient on a on dibigatran, you know, four to eight weeks before the procedure, you do the ablation, they receive heparin also during the procedure, and then after the procedure they stay on their dibigatran for at least eight weeks in all patients, and if their CHADS vast score is two or greater, you continue anticoagulation indefinitely. I was going to say, if you had an ablation and you had a reasonably high CHAS vast score, you'd want to be no act, wouldn't you? Well, yes, you'd want to be anticoagulated because we know that AF ablation doesn't cure all patients. We know that strokes occur even when you're in sinus rhythm. And as time goes by, patients pick up stroke risk factors. They get older, they get hypertension. And so the safest thing to do is to continue the anticoagulation, even if the procedure looked like it was a fantastic success. Okay, so uh, a change in the way we do things. That's an important trial. And uh, clearly, I think Dabigatran is a big winner in this one. Thank you, Hugh. Great. Thanks, Peter.